Let's start things off with a little truth. Yes, I've tested a few R Max over the past few years. You might think this would get a bit redundant after a while, and the fact of the matter is simply this, you're not wrong. But I'm pretty positive thinking kind of guy, and there's one major benefit to testing the same vehicle a few times. That benefit is experience. We spend a lot of time with each vehicle before we do a test ride around here because we know that our credibility depends on you, our viewers, being able to trust that our opinions are based on a lot of hands-on experience. And it always is, but the reality of the situation is that, on a grander scale, our time with some of these vehicles is not as long as we'd like. Which brings me back to my first point. When I get to test the same or similar model multiple times, my hands-on experience with it grows with each test, and this is precisely the case with the R-Max. I have tested the XTR four-seater two times and the XTR two-seater two times as well, and I've done multiple feature stories with both of them. I've attended multiple Yamaha events as well, where I racked up more than enough seat time in the Limited, the R-Spec, and the newest model, the Sport, to form solid opinions I'm very comfortable sharing with you. This includes a three-day, nearly 300-mile desert ride in the R-Max 2 Limited. Today, I have here with me the newest model in the R-Max lineup, the Sport. And instead of going through the typical test ride format where I talk about all of its features and its capabilities and the things that it does well and things that it might not do so well, I'm gonna do things a little bit different. Instead of all that, I'm gonna talk about what makes the Sport unique in the lineup and what I think about it in general. But I'm gonna spend more time talking about why, after all the seat time I've had in the different models in pretty much any condition you can dream up, I have such strong and overwhelmingly positive opinions about the R-Max lineup as a whole. Before we get to that, we do kind of need to talk a little bit about the Sport though. And I think the first thing that's most important to understand is that it's not actually an up or downgrade from the XTR model, which is also called an SE in Canada. In the US, the XTR is $1,300 more than the Sport, but it includes the Adventure Pro, which is the reason for the price increase. Yamaha Canada does not offer the Adventure Pro in any model, which is why the price north of the border is identical between the LE and the Sport. The only real difference between the two is the wheel and tire package, the shock setup, and of course the colors and graphics. All the other specs and features are identical. Yamaha has positioned the Sport to be, are you ready for this one? More sporty than the other models. I know, I was shocked by this as well. The way they went about this though is to spec a set of Fox 2.0 piggyback shocks that are both high and low speed compression adjustable at all four corners. This allows the driver to more precisely tune how the R-Max Sport will ride and handle as speeds get higher and the terrain gets rougher. The other major difference is a set of 30 by 10 GBC TerraMaster tires on 14 inch true beadlock wheels that replace the 30 inch Maxxis Carnivores on the XTR. The TerraMaster tires feature a far more square tread profile which helps improve high speed traction and handling. They're also a multi-tread design, which means the inside and outside tread pattern of the tire is different and will offer different handling characteristics depending on what type of surfaces you drive on most. Simply unmount the tires, turn them around, and remount them. You can even choose just to remount the fronts or the rears for even more specific handling characteristics. The question will inevitably be asked, why is there no Adventure Pro in the US version of the Sport model? And the answer is pretty simple, but in my opinion, not 100% accurate. Yamaha says that the type of rider who will buy a Sport will be driving faster and more aggressively and will therefore be more focused on the trail than on a fancy gauge. However, after using the Adventure Pro, I have found that it offers all kinds of features and benefits that are useful even when the vehicle stopped. Therefore, I think it should be included on the Sport model. On the other hand, I think it should be included on the models in Canada as well. And to be clear, it is available as an option for Canadian customers. It's not a standard feature because map coverage is pretty thin north of the border and Yamaha doesn't think it's right to include an expensive feature that has limited functionality. As I said earlier though, even if the map coverage isn't great, the rest of the features the Adventure Pro has make it well worth the money in my opinion. So the question that you need answered most is pretty simple. Is the Sport actually more sporty than the XTR or is it just different parts? And the answer is equally as simple. Yes, it does feel more sporty. It feels more stable at higher speeds in the corners, and once you get suspension set up correctly, it does feel more controlled in the bumps. You can actually drive it faster and harder than the XTR. Now, I wanna shift gears and talk more about why I feel so strongly about the R-Max. What is it about this vehicle that I like so much? Yes, familiarity is a factor, but I believe it's all about my actual experiences with the vehicle while getting so familiar. The first one I want to touch on is the crew ride we did last season with the XTR 2-seat and an XTR 4-seater. Here at home, our trails are far less refined than many other places I've ridden. 
Every ride is a mission and combines rock crawling, mud running, big bumps, and small sections of high speed trail mixed in between. From the very first time I drove the R-Max, I was impressed with how it handled all of these conditions, pretty much like it had been custom tuned for each one. On the rough trails, it smoothed out the bumps and resisted bottoming extremely well. On the rocks, the suspension articulation was fantastic and overall traction was nothing short of impressive with both the two and four seat models. Being able to turn the D mode switch to crawl to get buttery smooth throttle control was also a huge bonus. In the muddy sections, whether sticky or wet, deep or shallow, the R-Max just seems unstoppable. In fact, I don't think I've ever had one stuck. And then on those all too rare sections of smooth and fast trail, handling is predictable and the power steering gives you just the right amount of power assist. Our entire crew agreed that it took almost no time to get comfortable driving both the two and four seat R-Max models, even at higher speeds. And even our biggest passengers felt the rear of the four seater offered more than enough room. Even when we loaded it up with pickles, both models still felt stable and handled predictably. My experience with the R-Max goes so far beyond just my home trails though. I've also spent considerable time on one in Arizona, riding in the desert on narrow mountain passes to wide open desert trails. My first trip to Arizona to ride R-Maxes was the intro of the sport model. We rode fast sections of desert then climbed up to around 6,000 feet of elevation on some awesome switchback trails. The trails even included some challenging rock crawling sections. At higher speeds in the desert, the R-Max Sport was stable and handling was predictable and precise. The suspension did a great job of soaking up everything from high speed sand whoops to rough rocky sections. I've always been impressed by how capable the R-Max is in the bigger rocks and the Sport was no exception on this trip. But it's more than just how capable the vehicle itself is, it's also the little things like the sight lines over the hood that make crawling that much better. I think the trip that taught me the most about the R-Max though, was the ghost town tour I did with TJ Dillashaw and Ryan Villapoto, again in the Arizona desert. The trip was three days long and we had to be self-sufficient the whole time, which meant packing all of our food, cooking supplies, water, clothing, gear, camping gear, and for myself and my camera operator, Jake, all of our camera gear. The R-Max Limited I was driving had no trouble carrying all the gear Jake and I needed for the entire three day trip. The cargo box proved to be more than big enough and the limited R-Max with its adjustable Fox suspension rode fantastic in all conditions. It was comfortable with its front and rear windscreens and the Adventure Pro was so useful, not just for mapping, but for keeping an eye on all the bits of important vehicular data I like to obsess over. From dusty sand washes to steep rock ledges to slot canyons and rocky mountain passes, the R-Max Limited handled everything we could throw at it without breaking a sweat. And I think it was this trip that really proved to me just how fantastic Yamaha's Ultramatic CVT transmission really is. After three days of riding covering just under 300 miles, I realized I hadn't used low range, not once. The Ultramatic transmission protected the belt while offering buttery smooth performance in every condition, including those that would require other vehicles to be in low range. Now, I don't know exactly how many miles I've put on all the different R-Maxes I've ridden in the past few years. It's definitely a lot. But what I do know is that the more I ride the R-Max in any form, the more I like it. There are very few things to complain about, but so many things to love. It's incredibly capable, but also incredibly useful. It's fun to drive fast or slow. It's well-built and highly durable. It looks mean and it sounds serious. Simply put, the R-Max is an easy vehicle for me to recommend to anybody looking for a two or four seat sport utility side-by-side -side with good cargo capacity, impressive suspension, and excellent power because I've put it through its paces in every condition imaginable, and it hasn't once disappointed me or let me down.